Welcome. Now that we're familiar with our positions, types, placements of boards, and we know how to reach the MC3 web page, it's time to configure functions to inputs and outputs. In this way, we let the MC3 know what actuators and sensors in the field are connected to which input and outputs on the platform. We can do this, for example, based on an electrical schematic of the cabinet. Let's get started. In the last video, we ended with the basic MC3 web page on our laptop. In order to go to the configuration page, we can simply press the MC3 text in the middle of the web page or add dash config behind our URL. If we do this, the MC3 will prompt us a request to put in a password and a username. This will be our default system password. Once we've logged in, we get a web page similar like this. Navigate to the sidebar and press the controller config tab. In our system, we have some example tabs, so yours might look a bit different and have some different naming. If we press one of the config tabs, we'll start to see some configuration in our main screen. We see function, mode, type and hardware numbers, but let me explain what they mean. First, we have the function. This is the function within the MC3 that you want to refer to an input or output. Next to this, we have the mode. The mode can be used to adapt the working of a function. The modes can be used for inputs and outputs and are depending on your controller. However, the most common used option within all of our MC3s is the normal and inverted option for digital inputs and outputs which, as the name might suggest, inverts the signal, meaning high becomes low and low becomes high. This is often used for alarm inputs and outputs. We also have the type. These are the types of inputs and outputs we've learned about in the previous videos. Digital, relay, analog and temperature. Next to this, we have the hardware numbers. Here we fill in the board position and the I.O. placement on the board. This is the place we link the function to a position and place within the platform. The hardware number refers to the board number and the input and output placements within the system, like we learned in the previous videos. Let's start with an example. We have a temperature sensor connected to board 3 input 1 and according to our schematic, we want to use this as a product control sensor. First, on the web page, we navigate to the correct function, product temperature sensor 1, and then by pressing the drop-down menu behind the function, we can see all the inputs available within our system. We then select board 3 input 1, and now we made a link between our temperature sensor in the field and the product control sensor function within the MC3. For our second example, we'll take an alarm signal connected to a digital input on board 4 input 2. We want this signal to trigger an alarm if the signal is low or disconnected. So how do we do this? We go to our function, external fatal alarm, press on the drop down and select board 4 input 2. When we have done this, we can see that there are mode options available for the functions. Normal, active when high and inverted, active when low. Since we want to have an alarm activated when the signal is low, we'll select the inverted option. Now that we have some inputs configured, we press on Submit on the bottom of the page. And our new configuration is stored, but at this stage not yet used by the controller. We'll go into this in a bit. First we'll go ahead and also configure some outputs for our system. We have our cooling connected to a relay output on board 2, output 1. And an alarm output on board 2, output 4. We want the alarm output to be on or active when there is no alarm and it needs to break or be off when there is an alarm. So let me show you how we can configure this. We navigate to our function, cooling output and select board 2, output 1 from the drop down menu. We do the same for our alarm output and select board 2, output 4. You might already noticed but also for the relay outputs, we can select the normal and the inverted option. Since we want to have a fail-safe alarm contact, which breaks the connection if there is an alarm, we'll use the inverted option for the alarm function. 
Once you have done this for your new configuration, don't forget to press submit on the bottom of the page. Otherwise, all the settings won't be saved and you will lose your changes. After adding these inputs and outputs, we want to check our work. Did we configure the functions to the correct input or output? We can do this by going by each of the functions one by one, but an easier option would be to use the Confu page of the controller. You can find this page here under Controller Config. In this page, you can see the inputs and outputs present in your controller and the function you have configured to it. Next to this, you can also see the current hardware state value of all of the inputs and outputs present within your MC3. We can check our work and we can see that we placed our functions on the correct inputs and outputs. Now that we have configured our basic configuration and we have checked it, we need to restart the system in order for it to use the new configured functions. We can do this by going to the other tab, look for restart application and then restart the application. After the restart, the controller uses the new configured inputs and outputs. So, as a reminder, after you made changes, press submit on the bottom of the configuration page and then restart your application to make your changes active. This concludes the hardware configuration of the MC3 system. The MC3 now knows what function is connected to which input and output in the electrical cabinet or in the field. Detailed control such as set points, offsets and other control behavior are configured to the parameters of your system. You can find these parameters in the manual. In the next video we'll take a look at the functions that are on the webpage, what they do and how they can help you. See you in the next video.